Hi, I'm Dan Coffin, owner of SPNC Corp and certified professional agronomist. And the topic of this particular video is soil balance. Now, to some people, soil balance means let's get the P and the K levels as high as we can get them. And that makes them balanced. But that is not what we're really in search of. If we go back many years, back into the 1940s, there was a, a researcher by the name of Dr. Albrecht uh, at M University of Missouri who had done a lot of research into soils, how they related to animals and animal nutrition, uh, how they related to plant nutrition and many things. And it's come under, he, he came under fire for years and, and was concerned about even his, his employment um, with the University of Missouri because it came out hard against, in some cases, the fertilizer industry. Because what Dr. Albrecht was discovering was when we properly balance the cations in the soil, and by cations, we're talking about elements that have a positive charge on them when they're in their natural state in chemistry. So calcium has a two plus, magnesium has a two plus, potassium has a one plus, sodium has a one plus. The micronutrients, copper, zinc, manganese, and iron have two pluses or three pluses. All of these elements stick to the soil because the soil has a net negative charge. It's like a giant battery and most of the charge present in clay uh, and silt and, and organic matter is negatively charged. So it's a giant battery. So those cations stick and that's where we come up with the term cation exchange capacity. How much sticking do you have going on? How much total fertility can you hold? So we know that sands have low CECs maybe three or five, and they don't hold very much. And so we're constantly putting in fertilizer for them to try to keep levels up. Whereas uh, heavy silts or silt loams or silty clay loams or clay loams have extremely high uh, cation exchange capacities. And once you get those up to a certain level, they may hold for years and not change very much at all. They have a lot of battery charge, if you will. It's like the old idea many years ago, you had a one hour battery, you could charge it up, or you might get, to, if you spent more money, you might get a three hour or a six hour battery. So you charged it once for six hours and it lasted a long time. Whereas the sands are like one hour batteries, the clay loams are like six hour batteries. So the whole point is, what's the importance of the balance? Well, what we understand is clays shrink and swell based on how much calcium and magnesium or sodium and potassium they might have on them. The higher the level of, of calcium on a clay type soil, the more easily it holds water, it shrinks and swells and releases water. So if we get the right balance of calcium in there, our clays operate properly. In our area here around the Fort Wayne area, and as you go north uh, east of us up towards the, the glacial lake plain, uh, the Lake Erie glacial lake plain across uh, to uh, Northwest Ohio and up to Lake Erie, those soils were deposited by lake and a lot of clay is eroded when it's high in magnesium. It erodes, goes down the hill, gets into the, uh, the water flow, gets into the creeks, gets into the rivers, gets into the lakes. And so old lakes are naturally loaded with lots of magnesium. So those soils typically are oversupplied in magnesium. So their calcium levels are decent, but their magnesium levels are excessive. And when magnesium is on those clays, those clays hold water very tightly they swell, but because they hold water so tightly, they won't release it and they don't shrink down very well. So high magnesium soils are very, very low in oxygen. So the reason the balance is important isn't necessarily because of the nutrient values that the plants can find. It's because that if we get too much magnesium, too much potassium, too much sodium and not enough calcium, the clays don't shrink and swell very well. They don't release moisture as they should. They tend to be sticky and wet and even in the summer when you go out and you're like oh i got plenty of moisture you kick it around with your foot and you're like oh this is sticky well the fact of the matter is they're not getting very much oxygen and those of you who have high magnesium soils know exactly what i'm talking about so what's a proper number if you were to go to a soil test and so we use those in conjunction with helping people understand uh, what, what kind of numbers they should have so if you have heavy clays or clay loams around this area you should probably have something in the range of maybe 72 to 75% calcium. You should have somewhere properly in that 15% base saturation of magnesium. You should have somewhere in the vicinity of 3% potassium at the very most. Uh, and you're hearing people saying, oh no, you want six or seven. Uh, that's a little bit dis different discussion for corns. You don't want them that high. It's gonna take in your top end away. So if you can get it somewhere around three, three and a half percent, that's a maximum you would need. And most of our soils here in this area, if we have 2%, 2.5% uh, on a clay loam, that's way, way more than enough that, that, that we need. 
um, for potassium. And then sodium, you can have a little, you know, there's a little around, it's not critical, maybe 1% at the most. And then the rest would be made up by cations that are, that are micronutrient based. So what I'm saying is good nutrition with good phosphate levels, good micronutrient levels in a proper balance allows soils to breathe, give up water well, maintain biology, have really good soil tilth, and are very easy to work with in the big picture. Those, if you look at some of your farms over time that may have been your most productive farms, you might find that's that's exactly what you've got going on. You've got a better balance of nutrition, calcium and magnesium. We've never really seen any direct correlation in, in grid sampling with P and K, but we've seen dramatic improvements in grid sampling with limestone, because limestone can be excessively uh, difficult and expensive to apply. Uh, the whole idea of high cal lime, that's the difference between calcium and magnesium. Um, lime is not lime. I don't care what anyone tells you. They tell you lime is lime, don't worry about it. High mag lime will drop your pH faster. But the more high mag lime you put on, the more wicked and challenging your soils get, because if you leave it on top, especially, they start shrinking and swelling wrong. They'll swell shut, they'll get hard. And any of you who've dealt with that through the years know exactly what I'm talking about. We've always used gypsum if we can. If the calcium levels are at or above 60%, you can put gypsum on those fields and dramatically improve their openness, their uh, viability, their ability to drain, uh, their ability to sustain uh, biology and, and change dramatically the improvement of soil fertility. Um, but if your soil test levels of calcium are down in the 50s and you start with gypsum, that's a no-no because what we've seen over time is the gypsum um, for whatever reason, pulls the calcium levels down faster because it's finding more calcium than magnesium initially, and the, the calcium levels will crash, and your soil would end up suffering a, a terrible uh, backlash. So you have to know what you're doing with that. But this is all the idea of soil balance. And once we get soil balance, we get better nutrition, we get better airflow, we get better uh, management of the clays on, in, in, the, in the soil. And so soil balance is all about helping air water management as well as fertility release. So um, it's a whole seminar, a whole day in and of itself with all the things like we talk about base saturation, CEC, um, all these different cations and what they're responsible. That's an entire day seminar that we can, that we can do in here. And we've done them in the morning and then other things in the afternoon for people having programs to, to work with that. So if you have questions about that, please call us here at, um, at 260-478-8080. That's the main number coming in here to SPNC Corp. Um, or check us out um, at spncorp.com. I will try and do my best to get some more uh, videos on here about that. But typically we try to do those in-house just because it's, it's so intense. Um, it's, a, it's a complete seminar that has to be done with PowerPoints and, and many other pieces. So um, we will gladly help you. And for all you have questions, answer all that we can um, because it's a fascinating piece of, of soil science. Thanks, have a great day.